The next profile is the QEDM, or Query for Existing Data for Mobile. This profile is meant to be a lightweight query for clinical data elements that includes vital signs, problems, medications, immunizations, diagnostic results, procedures, or visit history. The idea is that this is meant to be implemented, this profile is meant to be implemented specifically by mobile devices, hence its lightweight nature. And that's what the little m in QED stands for. The solution is based um, by using HTTP-based RESTful APIs, and it uses HL7 Fire STU3 resources, which have a maturity level um, between two and five. Those are fire maturity levels set by HL7, or known as FMM levels. Just as a point out that these do not use fire maturity standards of level six, hence there is a high likelihood that they will be, there is potential that they could be changing in the future. QEDM may be used as a standalone or combined with a ITI profile, which is the mobile cross enterprise document data elements extraction. How this works, I will address in a couple of slides. QEDM uses existing actors from QED clinical data consumer and the clinical data source and introduces one new transaction, mobile query existing data. It allows for the query of fine-grained data using the HL7 Fire Query Framework. And the result of the query is a response that contains a Fire Bundle that has the clinical data resources that match the query parameters. There are several options available based on the type of data you're querying, and those are listed in the second bullet there. There is one additional option available on the profile, the document provenance option, which allows the clinical data consumer to fetch the fire clinical data resources together with the provenance resource, referencing the original document from which the clinical data was extracted. And this then can be used further to get retrieve the actual original document that contained that data. So to visualize that, <clears throat> here are the, the two actors, QEDM Clinical Data Consumer and QEDM Clinical Data Source. The con data consumer <clears throat> would use the mobile query existing data transaction to retrieve one of these different types of data by using the appropriate option. The clinical data consumer might also invoke the provenance option and retrieve the actual CDA document that allows that actually the clinical data came from. And once we, we get that, the clinical data consumer could use the MXDE profile to retrieve the actual original document using the provenance links. So QEDM addresses the original retrieving of the data and the further use of the provenance and getting the document is, is detailed in MXDE, which is in ITI. That wraps up QEDM. The next profile is the 360 exchange closed loop referrals, also known as 360X. This profile is really meant for the closing of the loop between a referral initiator and a referral recipient. And uses point-to-point -point transactions 
in mainly an ambulatory setting with referrals from a PCP to a specialist, for example. What you see here is the structure of this profile. The transport layer is built upon using the ITIXDM profile with the zip over email and zip over email response options. In addition, there's also an XDR or an MHD option available to use as transport. This is built in such a way that future standards such as FHIR, where the metadata is natively represented and workflow management within FHIR is under development, can also be used and this profile be updated to, to handle that. The workflow layer then builds on top of that transport layer, and that workflow layer is for the referral specific information. It uses HL7 version 2.5.1 messages with some pre-adoption from HL7 version 2.9. That is what controls the actual workflow, and I will get into that in the upcoming slides. <clears throat> and finally, built on top of that is the actual clinical information and we use HL7 CTA documents to convey the clinical information between the referral initiator and the referral recipient. These, again, as Laura mentioned, use uh, some of our more common documents, such as the XDSMS and XPHR um, that we mentioned earlier. You can use the appropriate CCDA 2.1 options also. So the 360 exchange, uh, 360X, has these two actors that we've mentioned, referral initiator and referral recipient. And the transactions, seven transactions, the most common workflow or the happy path will probably account for most of the referrals, consisting of a referral request, and the referral outcome transactions, the first two listed there. But the idea is that the referral initiator would initiate using a referral request to the referral recipient, and then everything goes great, and the referral recipient provides the referral outcome back to the referral initiator. More information about this can be found in the details within the profile. In addition to the base profile, IHEUSA also has produced a 360X U.S. national extension. Um, the original impetus for the profile came from the 360 exchange closed loop referral project supported by the ONC. The project goals are to keep the requirements from the information exchange within the existing requirements for healthcare information technology as specified by Meaningful Use Stage 2 and Stage 3. And the requirements of the national extension are to use direct and XDM as the transport layer and use of CCDA as the clinical information format. You can find more information on the link to the 360 project wiki here. That concludes the 360X. Then the final profile, the routine interfacility patient transport or RIPT. The problem here we're trying to solve is there is a need for inform in, to inform the transport care team of important patient information so that the transport care record is populated preferably electronically and not manually. And some of this information that the transport team needs, uh, verbal reports, signatures and reading, you know, and, and avoid reading through a lot of paper charts. So the value that this profile brings is for EMS services and hospitals when there is a transport being requested from one hospital either to a long-term care facility or to another hospital, and EMS is necessary to transport the patient. It decreases the EMS time spent doing paper handoff on the floor, it, thus increasing bed availability at the hospital and improving throughput for the emergency department. 
This is how RIPT addresses some of the problems and challenges that EMS and transport folks face in today's world. The technical solution for RIPT uses two approaches, a CDA approach and a fire-based approach. They're both high level listed here. With the CDA approach, it is a simple document sharing using any of our document sharing available profiles. And the CDM document sharing transaction is used here. I'll go into the details later. The FIRE approach has a new query for transport data that requests that data from the transport data consumer, or the transport data consumer requested from the transport data responder. So using the document sharing approach, a long-term care facility might be sharing a document with a hospital. An example again here is our one of our common documents, the medical summary. Meanwhile, the RIP profile allows an EMS or transport system to get the patient's care record using the similar underlying structures and a new document that is defined here with this new content. With the FIRE approach, RIPT, ripped again, there may be information being shared between a rehab facility and a hospital, for example, and a patient is being transported from the hospital to a rehab facility, and the EMS or transport system may query for the transport data, and that query is based using FIRE, HL7 FIRE. Again, that's the e-patient clinical record that you're, they're able to then receive and take care of the patient during the transport activity. That concludes the RIPT profile.